Hey everyone, good evening. We are the Gratitude Girls. The Gratitude Girls are in the house. Let <laughs> us announce something tonight before we go any further. Mrs. Gratitude Girls, Lori Dell, tell us, Lori Dell, tell us your new name. Radecki. <laughs> Mrs. Radecki, welcome to the Gratitude Girls. This is the very first appearance that you're making, and we are so excited and so happy for you, for our audience who's watching. This is Lori's honeymoon, and we're all with her on it. That's something new. Tell us, Mrs. Radecki. Give us a word of wisdom, the ma Mrs. Radecki, the married woman to the rest of the world tonight. Yes, if you want to do something, just do it, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing, Lori. We're so, so happy for you and for your husband, Kevin. And we are sending you so much love. And this is such a special, special show tonight. We are making history together with our guest and with you and to everybody who's watching. If you've watched us over the last seven years, you have watched amazing things happen from Lori and I meeting on stage to what's happening right now. And I, I don't know what to say. My heart is filled. Lori, I would love for you to be able to tell the story about, like, first of all, where we are, what part of the world we're in, how we met. And then maybe you can tell us a little bit about if you can, I know it's your personal life, just something about being Mrs. Radecki, and then we'll uh, in, announce our guest. So I'm, I'm Catherine Asaro Myers, affectionately known, affectionately known as Rara's Ra in the house. And I'm sitting to you tonight in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, but I will say tonight, and I won't say anything else. Lori, where are you? <laughs> yes, today I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, and who knows where I'll be next month also. <laughs> and that's what we have going on. We don't know where we're going to be talking to you from next month. So stay on your toes and stay tuned with us because we have lots and lots of things going on. Let's share a little bit about how we met. I mean, today's going to be charged with amazing energy because not only how we met, but what, what we're doing at this moment I know you like to start the beginning of the story, so if you're okay with that, Mrs. Radecki, would you like to please start with how did we meet? Why are we gratitude girls here? Like, what's going on with that? Yes, absolutely. So Catherine and I are both part of a direct sales company called Send Out Cards. We are actually cross-lined to each other. We met on stage in front of thousands of people, so there is... With our company, they have one award theme like for each year, and one person wins that award for the year. And one year in 2013, there was actually a tie, and it was the first time there ever was, and has ever been, there's never been another one since then. So, um, our CEO announced all the accolades and talked all the wonderful things about this person, and then joined asked Catherine to come up on stage to win the gratitude award. And that year, then he said that there was a tie picked by their peers. So not by corporate. So thousands of customers and distributors all around the world. And he ended up picking my name as the second one. So Catherine and I are cross lined to each other. We met on stage and we just knew that, you know, that nothing happens just for a reason or coincidence, there's always some sort of reason. And so, and it was kind of like, you know, how they say like love at first sight on dates. Well, this was like love at first sight as great friends and business partners. And we knew we needed to do something with it. And so of course me with all my web stuff, I had my phone and I checked gratitudegirls.com was available. And we said, we'll figure out what we're gonna do with it later. And now seven years later, we've done a show every single month for seven years. That is such an amazing story. I remembered, Lori, when Cody called our name, I called my name and my knees were shaking and I went up there. And when I, first it's surreal, right? Cause we didn't know this, we were chosen, like we earned this. It wasn't sort of, it wasn't a lottery where our name was picked. And so we didn't know what was gonna happen and we didn't know that we would even really be candidates, right? Like we just found out. So that was the first like, epiphany like oh my goodness you know my peers thought this of me and then there's a tie and then you think about the odds of that 
of it never happening before and never happening since in the history of this company. And there's Lori. And I remember thinking, I would love to meet Lori Delk at that time you were Lori Dell, because Lori had won awards for giving the most gifts. And I thought, what would it be like to receive a gift from Lori? Like that is such an amazing person. So when I saw that it was Lori, I was having one of those moments, like I wanted to meet her and here she is. Like, how is that possible? And we actually touched hands and we made a connection and we went to the bottom of the stage, which when we were done, I listened to Lori's story and we held hands and we knew that this was a moment for us that was the beginning, not just having the award, which was amazing by itself, but we knew there was another connection. You know, that that very, like that love at first sight, that feeling where we had this connection that was very powerful and neither of us were going to ignore that. We knew that that was something we would step into because we had shared so much without knowing each other. How powerful would that be once we got to know one another and Lori just did that, take, took the steps and we figured things out very quickly. There was really no lag time between what we wanted to do and our initial intention was and still is to provide a vehicle, a platform for our guests all over the world to share their gratitude. And with that, we have amazing guests who have amazing intentions as well. And we have an audience, you, who has been here, excuse me, who has been here with us all these years. So the fourth Tuesday of every month, we not only come on to do a show, but we come on to share what has happened all month. And to know that you are now married to a Mrs. Radecki, can you share with us before we go into the show, please tell us a little bit, a little secret, tiny secret, we won't tell anybody about your wedding. Hmm, tiny secret. Well, um, just... We, uh, this was our third meeting with our pastor and we just kind of like the night before we were talking about when we were going to get married. Cause we were actually a couple things we had in mind. We were supposed to go to Iceland in March. So we talked about it then we we're going on a cruise in September. We talked about it then we said, well, we missed Iceland because the country closed two days before we left. And then, um, and then we talked about September. We didn't want to really wait till then. And then we both have several things going on in May and June. And so then we talked about July and then we were like, oh, I don't know if we really want to wait till then. And so, um, so Monday we went to the jewelers. They, um, I know an owner of a jewelry store. And so they made a special appointment for us to come in when they were closed and pulled out just a couple rings to show us. And we picked out the ring. It's actually being custom made right now. So it wasn't one off the shelf. It was, we told them what we liked, what he liked and, um, and picked that out, got that done. So technically we kind of like got engaged at 10 AM, if you want to say, and then we went to have lunch with our pastor and his wife at noon. And we told them, um, why don't we just get married now? <laughs> and so we went in their backyard and we had his wife and his older, one of his older daughters that's over 18 as a witness. And we just went ahead and got married. So we didn't have to wait. <laughs> you don't believe in long engagements? Well, yeah, about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> that is an amazing secret that you told us. It's a great story. Oh my goodness. We, you know, we don't know unless we ask. And Mrs. Radecki, that's how that story began. You obviously move fast, so we better stay tuned and on our toes and listening to you. You, you are a beautiful bride and your ceremony was amazing. I watched it over and over. And I love the way you looked at Kevin, but I just love the way he hugged you and kissed you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Every woman who's watching this right now, connect with Lori Delk on social media, on Instagram and on Facebook and watch her video because you will, with tears of joy and happiness, you will cry of happiness and wish that you can have a husband that does exactly what Kevin did with Lori. It's amazing. And Lori, you are an amazing wife. So if you're a gentleman watching good luck finding somebody just like my gratitude girls partner, because they exist 
but there's only one Lori Delkwadecki and we have her. So thank you so much, Lori, for sharing with us. Oh, that's great. We have a guest tonight and maybe you could do some introduction for us and then we can speak with her and see if she has a secret for us. I can, yes. So our guest tonight, she's been one of my great friends for several years. She is a fellow coach, author, speaker, and trainer. She has done amazing work with so many women. And then I actually got to meet her finally in person last November. So I was so excited about that too. And so I am super blessed and honored that for her to be on our show with us tonight. Miss Lakeisha Dixon, welcome to the Gratitude Girls. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. You congratulations. I seen your post and I was like, wow, what a special moment. That is a very special moment. And so I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here live with the Gratitude Girls. This is totally awesome. It's, it is a special moment, right, Lakeisha? Thank it you so is. much. For being here. I know we talk about gratitude and that is the basis of the show, but I was thinking that tonight we can open with a secret. Yes. Seems like Lori, you know, Mrs. Radecki, Radecki, Radecki just shared her secret. I'll leave it up to you if you want to share a secret with us. A secret. Okay. Well, a, a secret I will share is I was, I used to be a woman that was so closed up in my own little world. You know, um, I didn't want to date. I didn't want to have fun. You know, I thought that going out on the date with somebody was just like, oh my God, I'm no longer, you know, the little innocent Christian girl. And so a little secret of mine is I'm dating now and I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Look at that. It's a okay. love attitude. Yeah, so a lot of my followers don't know that, but yes, I'm dating. And I'm mm. so that's my little secret. <laughs> They're gonna know, Keisha. Your secret is <laughs> safe with us, but no. this is social media, so I would yes. imagine that you're gonna get a lot of messages. Yes, I know I am. <laughs> well, we won't ask you any other particulars, but how is he? He is. He's amazing. He's an amazing guy. He's amazing. You know, I think for me, you know, when you turn forty, I turned forty last year. And so 40 is that age and, 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 you know, and I can't speak for everybody, but for me, it was that eye opener age. Like, girl, you're 40. It's time for you to live a little bit more. It's time for you to just relax, you know, because sometimes we're so busy about the everyday cares of life, busy about the business, this busy about making money, busy about prayer time and busy about all these things. But sometimes the woman forget to make sure she's happy and make sure or she is doing the things that she wants to do. And so I think that that was big for me because everybody know me as taking care of everybody else, but not really taking care of me. And so I said, you know what, a good way to take care of me would be to start dating. And so that's what I'm doing. Oh, we're so <laughs> At happy. 40. <laughs> At 40. At 40. And goes, 40 is the new 35, you know? Like the <laughs> so, so good. Oh, good for you. Congratulations to you on that and opening up, right? Like we're grateful for the moments that we open up our mind and we open up the energy to receiving because they say that giving is important, but really it's bo it goes both ways. So it is better to give to receive, but really we need to do both, right? How do we give without receiving? So I think that's amazing because if we give everything away, then when, what will we have to give away? Right. You know? Absolutely. So, so important. That's a wonderful secret. That's uh, yes, that's a secret secret, honey. <laughs> well, I'm glad I asked you that question because now, now we know it's not only gratitude, it's gratitude and secrets that will yes. <laughs> get your audience hopping. Oh my goodness. And what part of the world are you in right now? Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. How is Atlanta, Georgia? Right now, you know, we are, we are good. Uh, we are good. We're still keeping it safe. Um, yes. There are certain things that are open, but for the most part, people are still being safe and cautious and social distancing. You know, we have to be smart, you know, and I feel like every individual needs to make the right decisions because, again, 
COVID-19 is still very real and it's here. And so though we can't see it, we have to exercise faith because faith is not seen either, but we know how to use it and we know how to call upon it. And so with the COVID-19, we are still practicing our social distancing and being very safe out here in Atlanta. I'm so glad to hear that you're all safe. You know, I was thinking the other day of all the things that we've gone through in life. And I was wondering what creates these tragedies in life and do they prepare us for the next thing? And I was wondering, were there 18 things that happened to me before this that made this number 19? And I was wondering, were there disasters and tragedies that have made us stronger? And does each one make us stronger? Does each one bring us together? And I was wondering, would there be a 20 after this? Like, what in our life? And I wanted to go back and bless each thing that happened. And I sat there, I was going to say stood there, and I thought of 18 things that happened to me that at the moment I thought were catastrophic, you know, from losing my front tooth to cracking my front tooth wow. to, you know, those things to losing my first boyfriend to finding my first boyfriend to thinking I lost him and I should find him again when losing him was the best thing that ever happened. But, you know, to think of all those things that happened to me and then come to 19 and say, is this the 19th thing that happened? Is this going to be the end? So I thought about how I could bless those tragedies mm -hmm. and create strength. How do you look at, at that? Mm. I love it. You know why? Because I feel, and, and I just, you know, I was just speaking to my girlfriend about this. I believe everything that every process we go through teaches us lessons. It grows us. It grows us. You know, I, I often think about I'm not the same woman as I used to be at 21. At 21, you know, you're still kind of young, kind of childish, still trying to navigate through the wilderness of life. But now at 40, just how life, just going through the process of life of being pruned, of actually growing into this full woman and evolving as a woman, because I don't feel like we just evolve. We are always evolving. We're always learning new things. And so when I think about the blessings of certain tragedies that have happened in my life, because it has been many, I think about how it has grown me up. And I think about with certain tragedies that I have gone through, and I think one of the major ones that I went through recently, I'm going to say recently, about four years ago, was when I had two blood clots that went to both of my lungs. And when those two blood clots went to both of my lungs, that was designed to take me out of here. You know, I was supposed to be gone, honey. But when God has a plan and purpose for your life, he will not only get you through the process, but you learn lessons, right? I began to take life more seriously, like saying, wow, you know, it's time for you to live. It's time for you to do those things that you wanted to do. It's time for you to start thinking outside the box. It's time for you to experience new things. Because again, we're not promised tomorrow, but what we do have is today. And how can we maximize time? And so one of the things that I had to learn from just different situations and trials and tests in my life is what is God trying to show me? And so would I be praying like this? Had I not been through any trials and tests? Mm -hmm. and challenges. Um, had I not been through those, you know, um, low paying jobs, would I be this motivated and hungry for change? You know, had I not experienced different uh, relationships or different heartbreaks or different disappointments, how would I know to have patience? How would I know to keep going? And so when life teaches us different lessons, it is designed to teach us something greater than the level of the lesson. Whenever we go through trials and tests, there's another level of knowledge and wisdom that we are supposed to learn. You're so right. Things are not what they appear to be, correct? Yes. They yes. are. They are, like you said, there's a design and then there's the process and then there's the outcome and there's the knowledge that surrounds that. And when we speak to people in these times of change, we know that there is suffering. We understand that. And we know that there's tragedy and we understand that there's irreversible damage. And it's so hard to look for the goodness in that. But with our belief in knowing that there is good in that, however that lands within each person if we know that then we know that the design is there for a reason and it's there and we need to believe and trust the process that is so so well put at this time and to honor what is going on in this 
world and this planet at this moment we never knew this at our last show that we would be in this we had no like really we had no clue no clue. last show no clue and at this moment we have no clue what's going to happen for the next show but we are more aware that we have no clue because we're thinking see you next month and then we now know god willing see you next month god bless there's a difference between see you next month and the true heart and now it is brought to our attention that we have a will and a design and we are blessed to be here at this moment. And that is what my attention has been raised to. And I'm so glad that you're able to really talk about this with us. And Lori, I know you have something to say about this and I certainly would love to hear what your, what your feelings and opinion is and are. Yes, definitely. Well, I totally agree with that. You know, we, we all have, you know, tragedies, of course, that we go through. And the thing is, that's it. If we got through them and was still breathing, then there's a purpose. And we have to find that purpose and find what that calling is that God has for on our life. And, you know, I know, especially, you know, Lakeisha, I followed her for so many years. And I know she has blessed so many women, including me. So, and it was such a blessing to meet her in person last, uh, last November when we were in Florida together and, you know, it just, and, and that's it when you can, you know, and especially also with all the different losses that I had in the last several years kind of crammed together pretty quickly, you know, I started realizing a lot more of what's my purpose for that dash that I'm here, you know, right. What kind of difference are we making while we are here breathing for a reason, yes. Yes. right? And so, yeah, and so, and I love that Lakeisha has found her purpose and is delving into that and just making such a difference in this world while she is here in her dash. Oh, you know, thank you. Thank you. It. Tell us a little bit more, Lakeisha, about that, about, so you are definitely t tuned into your core purpose. Can you share with our audience about that, please. You know, it's, it's so many different ways I can go with this, but for the sake of the audience and for the season that we're in, right? There are going to be so many people discovering purpose now more than ever in their lives. Because now what we don't typically get a chance to do is sit and rest. A lot of us are just sitting. I, I rode by today and seen a grandmother, her granddaughter outside sitting under a tree. These are things that we would normally not do. Why? Because we are so busy with the cares of life. So busy being a woman. So busy being a mother. So busy being a grandmother, a friend, a coach, a mentor. So busy working. So busy thinking of the next idea, the next strategy, the next um, how we gonna get the next big house. And you know, we have so many things on our mind as a woman. Who's gonna cook for the kids? Is my husband gonna be okay? And now purpose is really going to expose itself. And it's going to expose itself in a way that people are going to get it just like that. Because over the years, we have made people feel like purpose is so far-fetched. Like they are never get to achieve it. We have made it seem like it's this big old weird thing. When purpose is simply helping somebody else. Everything God created was meant to help somebody else. And that's what we do. And what we have to do is learn how to connect our purpose and our passion to become purposeful. Because it's not enough just to know your purpose. I knew my purpose, but I wasn't doing nothing with it, you know? And so it's now time for us to begin to operate in that purpose, activating that purpose, and understand that whatever your purpose is, God has placed you here to use it. Whether you are on the front line, that we see so many frontline nurses and doctors, we never called on a nurse and doctor as much as we calling on them now. Never called on the names. We never went to the hospital and say, thank you for taking care of my mother. Thank you so much. We are now doing things that we, that we never thought that we would do. And now the janitor is purposeful. 
right? A frontline person is not just a doctor and a nurse. You have janitors, you have the CNAs, you have people from what people will call, well, that's just, you know, the, the entry level employees to the highest paid employees in the hospital. All of them are in purpose now. All of them are realizing their purpose. You are needed. We are all needed. And so it doesn't matter if you're the janitor. It doesn't matter if you're the person who owns the hospital. Everyone in this season right now is so valuable. And so when we think about purpose and talk about activating in purpose, I'm just really activating in my, I was operating in purpose the whole time, but I didn't know it was purpose. So purpose just have become known to me. I've become aware of purpose just eight years ago. And when I became aware of who I was, competition stopped, comparing myself with everybody else stopped, being feeling inferior stopped, feeling like, you know, I wasn't good enough stopped. Because when God showed me, hey, I have you on earth to help these group of women navigate through the wilderness of life mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, and professionally. This is why you're here, to help women understand that they are valuable, whether they are mother, stay-at-home mom, to the high-level um, entrepreneur, they are valuable. And so I just believe, and for the viewers who's listening, this is going to be the season where purpose activate on the inside of you like never before. Because we finally have a time, ladies, Ra-Ra and Lori, to actually sit down and think and rest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Letitia, that is so valuable. I feel like I'm hearing purpose is activated by awareness. Yes. Yes. And when you were talking, I was thinking, you know, when we do go to the grocery store, how grateful I am that that person showed up to check out my groceries. Mm. Not that I didn't think of it before, but I'm so grateful now, even though they're behind a piece of plexiglass, I'm thinking, I want you safe. Yes. I really want you safe. I might not have seriously mm -hmm. thought about the safety of that person. Mm -hmm. I might have thought, I wonder if she's fast enough or he's fast enough to check me out so I can get to the next place. That might have been my thought process. Mm -hmm. If I went to the grocery store and, or if I ordered online, like, would they get me my groceries on what day at what time? Whereas now I'm thinking, thank you for mm -hmm. showing up and doing this job and loving it because I can now go and nurture myself to do the job that I love. And we're a team. My business partner is the check person at the grocery store because without them, I don't have a team. I look at people like you're on my team. Thank you. Right. Thank right. you for today. And tomorrow I'm going to find some, and that is my tribe. Whereas before yeah. it was more like my tribe were the people that signed up with me, but now you're my tribe. If you're within, you know, 10 yards or a hundred yards of me, whatever that distance is, because I'm in their tribe yes. because I'm rooting them on. I love to hear what you're saying. It just makes so, so yeah. much sense. And being thankful. You know, mm. when I see name tags, I, I don't, I don't just get my bag of groceries, throw them in my buggy and, and, and go or basket. I always say buggy. I think that's a South thing, but I'm always looking for name tags to say thank you. Because when we give honor to people that matters, mm. you know, people are coming to work, making eight, $9 an hour, risking their lives. We have had people in Atlanta that have died um, from serving us. Right. Mm -hmm. And they probably didn't even get a thank you because sometimes we are so again in the first couple of weeks, you see people in the grocery store rushing, panicking because they were used to everyday life like we do. It's a panic. This is what we used to every day. But now you see more people settling down in their spirit, settling down in their mind. And now I see people saying thank you. I hear, you know, when people walk into, you know, I used to be a time you go into the gas station, but I like, welcome to racetrack or welcome, welcome, welcome. No one said anything. Now you hear more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gratitude is a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. And I don't care who you are. Everyone wants to hear a thank you sometimes. If you serve somebody, I want to hear a thank you. That's why when you see little kids and they get you something, they're looking, anticipating the thank you. Right, because it's so important as humans. And so this whole Kairos moment that I believe that we're in right now is just teaching me how to love on people more. Because just three weeks ago, I watched my friend um, who, in one of my previous coaches, she was in her 40s, passed away from a blood clot. 
And so I had to watch her funeral online. It, it was it was just like we take simple things like that for granted. You know, she was here one day and gone the next. And so one of the things that I really want people to understand in this season about gratitude is say thank you. Force yourself to say it, even if you're not used to it because you're used to living a mean, stressful life. Begin to relax. Begin to relax and release some of that toxins from your past and that, that negative energy and, and, and force yourself to say thank you. And start with saying thank you tonight in your prayer. Say, Father, I thank you. God, I thank you. You know, I thank you that I still have a covering. I thank you that we still have some type of resources. You know, I was in the store the other day and I almost bust out crying. I was like, God, thank you that I have money to buy a piece of chicken. Like, I think that we forget um, how far and how blessed we really are. You know, whether you uh, make $8 an hour or a millionaire, I think we forget how blessed we are. And I think we forget that we have blessings because of our God. And so I am so like in this place of honor. I'm so like in this place of gratitude because what it's doing is keeping me humble and understanding that life can be worse off for me right? And for all of us. And so this gratitude, girls, I'm, I'm so yeah. loving what you and Lori doing, Miss Ra Ra, because I believe <laughs> that we need to take a step back and begin to learn how to be grateful for what we have. Because if we're grateful for the few, God will give us the many. If we're grateful for the $2, he can, he can multiply that into, to, into 2000 Yes. 10 times it, you know, you talked about, thank you so much. When someone lives a mean life or a toxic life, or they don't know any other way, and they think that's the way to be, they don't realize that maybe they're rude or they're hurting someone because that's the life that they led. But at this moment, that was then. And now it needs to change. Yeah. If someone is filled with toxic whatever they're filled with toxic attitude, let's call it attitude, and they're used to it and they feed off that, now is the time that they can let it go. They, if they needed an excuse, if they needed a push, if they needed a reason to be nice, they can blame it on this and yes. they can relieve themselves of doing anything other than being in the here and now, because now is not the time to be mean. Now is not the time to be, never, it never is. It's right. not the time to be toxic. And if someone has that bad attitude or that hurt or negative attitude, the world is hurting. It's greater than any hurt anybody could have from, yeah. I mean, it's just everything. We honor it all, but we have a planet of hurting people. Yes. And whether we are hurt or believe it or don't believe it, we are in this planet together. We are listening to it, however it affects us. We have to hear it. Mm -hmm. And if we can just let that go and not be mean and not be toxic and be kind and be grateful for this moment, we maybe won't have arguments with people anymore. We won't hear silly little petty fights. We won't hear about last year you did that. Forget that. We're talking about this year, this moment. It is the biggest pause of grace that I could ever have imagined. Wow. We sit at the table and we bless our food, but we bless the food in front of everyone, the crumb, the turkey, the, the, the bounty, but we bless the person who's eating the cookie because we say, if that's your bounty and we could give you more, then we're all for it. Before we used to look and judge, we would judge what went on around us. Like, oh, what is that? We didn't mean to, but we did it. And maybe we just did it in our head and that was as bad as doing it. Now I look at people, we were walking outside and there was a man sitting on the floor, sitting against the building. And I said to my husband, I want to give him his space. Mm. And I looked and I smiled at him and I waved. I don't know if six months ago I would have done that. Mm. I don't know what I would have done, but I looked at him like you're sitting on the ground and that's your place of pause. And I want to honor that. And I want to wave to you and I want to smile at you. 
because I don't know what else is going on in your life. I didn't rush. And we were just taking a walk, like just taking a walk on the street. And I thought, we have to change our attitude. We have to, because that will have that man maybe smile to someone else. And maybe those people will smile to people in my family that are not even born yet. Yes. <laughs> That's what matters, right? So I thank you so much for bringing this to our attention tonight and how you, how you speak about it and how you help women. So if there's a woman listening tonight and she's thinking, I am in despair, I want that advice. What would you say to the woman in despair tonight over the state of affairs? Wow. So I have two quotes that I love. And um, I believe that um, one of these is, is from Dr. Mike Murdoch. And he says, schedule your pleasures because your pain will schedule itself. It's one of my favorite quotes, right? Um, we, didn't, we didn't schedule enough pleasures. So that's why sometimes it feels like we're always defeated, always at a low place sometimes, or easily frustrated because we don't schedule enough pleasures. So schedule your pleasures because your pain will schedule itself. And I think I want to tell that woman who's listening to me right now that visionary, that mother, the woman who God has called, the woman that has something in her that she can use to help another woman, that woman who may say, you know what, Lakeisha, you don't understand. I'm a single mom. You don't understand. I just got a divorce. You don't understand. I just got married and, and I'm in bliss. You don't understand. Whatever the situation is, I want you to know this. You have survived 100% of your worst days. No matter how we look at it, no matter what chaos we are in right now, because this is a true pandemic. But if we be real, real truthful, Lori and, and Rara, we have each of us, every woman who's listening to me, have had their own personal pandemic. Every woman have had their own personal pandemic. Some, the pandemic may be you want a child and you cannot conceive. Some may be you wanted a child and, and, and you miscarried or in your past you had an abortion or it seems like this person getting married and you're not getting married. Seems like everybody business is blowing up and you're still at ground level. We all have had our own personal mental pandemics. But guess what? We're still here. We're still here at this very moment, still navigating through the wilderness of life. And so I'm going to tell that woman, guess what? If you have survived your own personal pandemic, surely this too shall pass. And I want to let you know that when it passed, you will look back over these days and say, I still survive 100% of my worst days. And I'm going to keep moving because guess what? It's some woman that's praying to be in your shoes right now. You may was like, well, you don't even understand. I don't got shoes. It's a woman praying for a better situation. And so I want to, you to be encouraged knowing that while we all are navigating through this, there is no answer. All we can do is look to the heels, which come by our help and our help comes from the Lord. And I heard a nurse say, she's an affectionate nurse who worked in the hospital. She said, Lakeisha, we don't have a playbook. We was never trained for this. And so what are we doing every day? We're navigating it. We're figuring it out. And so as you go walk your own path and your own journey of life, guess what? You're going to figure it out. God is going to give you wisdom to figure it out. And so take the pressure off yourself. One of the things that I used to have to do because I came from struggle, because, um, you know, I, I came from a place that wasn't appealing to many others. And I had to navigate through the process. I had to navigate through struggling had to navigate through not having enough finances to even buy soap. I had to navigate through all that. But because I was willing, I began to eat the good of the land. Because I said the excuses stop right here, I was able to see something greater. Because I said, how can I upgrade my life? And speaking out loud and allowing um, what I've learned and what I, other great women like Lori and Rara, just following other great women and, and seeing my friends and seeing other people who's living life better than me. Because I began to say, I know that there's more, I began to experience more. And so I want you to know, ladies, that it's starting your mind. It starts in your conversation, what you're telling yourself on a consistent basis. If you tell yourself that things will always be like this, 
it will always be like this because negative words produces negative results. But if you tell yourself, guess what? I'm gonna survive this, not only survive, but I'm gonna thrive. And when this is over, I'm gonna be such a better person, not only mentally, emotionally, but I'm gonna do things different. And I think that that's what each woman needs to know. That guess what, honey, we all are in this pool, whether you rich or poor, trying to figure it all out day by day in this too shall pass. Oh, thank you. Amen to that. That is an amazing message. I will watch this show over and over again. This is so awesome. Lori, 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 this is so fantastic. What are your thoughts on, I don't, I can't even comment. All I can say is yes. Yes. A hundred percent. You know, I, I, Lori, I don't know if you have a question for Lakeisha, but it was something I wanted to share. And Lakeisha, at some point in our show, what we're going to do is turn the show over to you. And we're going to ask you if you have any questions for us and unrehearsed, we'd be happy to answer them. I don't know if, Lori, if you have a question for Lakeisha before we turn the show over to her. Yeah, no question. Just comment. Mm -hmm. I love, I mean, I just love to, I've listened to Lakeisha for several years. And so, so that's why I like, Catherine, I knew that she just had to be on our show. And then especially when I saw her and met her in person in Florida, you know, after following her for several years, you know, I was just like, she is the epitome of a gratitude girl. We've got to have her on our yes. show. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This is just an amazing, amazing vibration. Lakeisha, if you are, and I'm sure you're okay, you're okay with taking the reins. We'd like to give you the opportunity, like, to give us the opportunity to have a question from you. So please tell us who you're addressing the question to, and then we'll answer as you wish, and then we'll take the show back. <laughs> you will. One, I just want to say thank you again. Anybody who follows me know I'm big on honor, and I'm big on Thanksgiving. You know, I don't, I don't take it lightly, you know, and especially when we can come together as women from all different backgrounds and connect in love and gratitude. Because at the end of the day, we're still women and women need other women. We all need other women. I was looking at your name, Rob Ross, so I'm going to start with you. And I seen the word, the bridge, right? And so um, I want you, because in my spirit, I'm thinking about this whole bridging thing as I see my cocoa chocolate face on here. And I'm with two other nationalities. And how we are living in a world that sometimes we need to bridge some things. And so my question to you is how as women, no matter what walks of life we are, how can we bridge the gap in helping and supporting each other? Amazing question. Thank you so much. Let's try this for 10 seconds. Let's breathe in. And let's breathe out. One more time. Let's breathe in. Let's breathe out. We were one, and that's how we bridge it. We breathe together. Mm. That's, that's my answer. Mm -hmm. We breathe together because breath bridges us together. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I breathe, you breathe. So it's always someone breathing to close in those gaps, right? Because at the end of the day, we all have breath. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's one thing we have in common. As long as we're on this earth, we will always have breath. And nothing when came in between stops, that. Right. Right. And when your breath stops, you should ask yourself how you breathe in a bridge to bridge the gap for another woman. I love that. I love it. Lori, you are a true, amazing coach. And um, when I met you in November, I was so grateful. I can feel the love and, and just the, it felt like we just connected in hugs. You know, it just, it's crazy to know that you can't even hug people now. But we were just so embraced and so hug, 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 huggable. So Lori, what is one thing that this pandemic has taught you that you will remember for the rest of your life? Wow, let's see. Well, I was already getting to where I was trying to calm my spirit more. You know, we, um, I was, 
in a season of life um, after Brian was killed in a car wreck seven years ago of I just kind of threw myself into I had still two had two kids at home that I was homeschooling had two grown children and um, raising them but throwing myself into my business and just you know if I work 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 lots lots more of course I was building my financial future but also just that's how I got through the process during that time right I thought well when I'm on stage speaking to thousands of people I can't cry so this is how I can get through this time of life right and so I just kind of threw myself into my business and then the last couple of years I've started slowing things down and um, and then since I met Kevin, he's helped me to slow things down a whole lot more. <laughs> and then of course, then this pandemic has slowed it down a whole lot more. But through this whole process, um, you know, I've, I've always been huge, huge, huge on communication and relationships. Um, family is huge to me. And I thought through this, you know, it's forcing families to stay at home and you know, every time I get the chance, I think, you know, to remind people, don't yell at that spouse or that child or whatever, use this time to build that relationship because pretty soon we're going to be back in that fast paced world again, right? Everybody's going to be back at work. Everybody's going to be rushing to do this and that and everything else. And use this time to build those relationships and build that closeness with people because how many things, you know, like my kids, my youngest will be 20 in July. I won't have any more teenagers. Wow. And, you know, and so and my oldest is 32, you know, and so it's just like, and that, that time goes by quick, you know, and, um, and so, and that's why we decided at the last minute too to get married because it's like, we already know we want to. You know, we already planned it. Why, why keep waiting? Why, why put off what we know we want? You know, why not, you know, just like in business, especially, you know, for us women, cause we are all, you know, like we, we coach some men too, but I know all three of us coach more women, right? Cause that's kind of what we feel like is our calling. And, but what do we tell women? You know, you want something, you go out, you get it, right? You do it, do it now. Let's go, let's get busy. Let's do it. Right. And so that's what we decided too. You know, why not? We we know we want it. Do it. Get it now. Get married. <laughs> so this pandemic have taught you how to embrace moments, right? Definitely. Embrace moments. embrace moments because really, you know, I said earlier that we were living in Kronos. And Kronos is like a supernatural strategic time. You know, a lot of us don't even look at our time no more. We don't even look at watches. We don't even, some of us don't even wear watches no more because we feel like it's really not, we're not in a place of being time driven now. And so that was very, very um, important what you said about going for the now, doing it now, not putting it off. And if you wanted to get married now, you did it now. And so a lot of times we feel like, no, there has to be this set time, this set place. It has to be all these things. And then sometimes we will miss the moment. Because we're over planning and we overthinking, but you took advantage of your now. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And just that's it. Cherish the moments. You know, just cherish the moments. Capture the memories. Everybody that knows me knows I'm a picture fanatic anyway, but that's it. You cherish the memories and you capture the moments to cherish those memories. Because that's mm. it. In in a moment of time you won't have that chance to anymore. Yes. Those Absolutely. Beautiful questions. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. I love your answer, Lori. I really do. Just listening to how you make the decision to get married because it's what you both wanted and want, and there was no reason to put that off. And I don't, I don't say that you wouldn't have done that anyway, but you know, this whole situation with life just makes us so aware of just what we want and what we are going to do and what, what can we do? We can do whatever we tell her if we can, or if we can't, whatever mm -hmm. we tell ourselves, right? That's true. And, and you're such a wonderful example and Lakeisha as well, such a wonderful example for doing. And there's nothing wrong with thinking, but doing just the action is so important, takes us out of any 
doubt, <laughs> right? And doubt will take us out of any action. And it's so wonderful to feel this energy. I could imagine what our guests are feeling right now. They're wondering, how do I get with this people? You know, like if you want to get with us, like we have all your contact information, Lakeisha. But before we talk about that, I'm just curious, is there someone that you want to say something to, something about a story or something you want to share with us about a gratitude story, something you want to say? I would love to, we would love to give you that, that moment or two moments or whatever that is. Please do take that. Yes. Um, I one of the gratitude stories I would like to share is someone um, contacted me on yesterday and she was like, I would like to buy some desserts from you so that I can take them to um, the frontline workers. I have a sister who works in um, the hospital. And so I believe it will be a beautiful touch. I want to show them my gratitude. And I was like, you know what, since you want to show them your gratitude, I will add something else. Um, to that because gratitude begets gratitude. <laughs> and so that's the story that I want to share because I believe that in this time, we have to be mindful of, of how we're giving to others. You know, if we can help somebody by doing just simple little gestures, let's do it. Let's do it. If you can leave an extra $2 tip in your takeout order, just do it, you know? Um, so whatever you can do to honor someone or show gratitude to someone, I believe that that would also come back to you because I believe that if we sow, we reap, you know, and um, the world uses, you know, uh, if you give, it'll be given back to you. And so I want to tell that story. And so because she said, I said, you know what, I'm going to add something else to your box. But again, gratitude begets gratitude. And if you live your life in gratitude, and gratitude is another form of honor, if you live your life and practice these principles, you will always see it displayed in your life in a lovely way. And then it also brings you to a place of peace because I love living in peace. I have created my own environment of peace. And so I tell people when they are chaotic, I'm like, let me go back home to my peace because that's where I know it is. You want to be chaotic over here? That's you. But I'm going to go back home to my place of peace. And so that's what I want to share. That's that story there. Oh, thank you. It sounds like you have a piece of paradise. <laughs> 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 I can feel that. I can feel that. So whatever you have, I want a piece of that paradise. Yes, I do. I do. I confess it every day. I confess peace. I confess that I live in peace. I speak with peace. I coach in peace. I dwell in peace. Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess when you begin to affirm those affirmations and decree and declare those things, you know, decrees are like a court order. So if I speak it, it has to bring me back what I spoke. And so I believe confessing that for the past two and a half, almost three years, I have learned to just, some things just don't bother me because it's something mm -hmm. that I can't do, you know? So if something was to happen that's beyond my control, I no longer try to fight every battle. And which I know that, you know, it has really changed me because I used to be that person that want to fight every battle, had to always get the last say so, very aggressive in my approach and still can be now. I still get very aggressive in my approach, but I have learned that I want to be at peace. I want to be at peace in my business. I want to just be at peace in life. You know, I fought, I struggled. I did that already. And so now at 40, I just want to coast. I want to coast. And, but the thing is, coasting does not mean exempt from obstacles, exempt from opposition. Coasting just means I'm going to handle these situations better. So mm -hmm. let me make that clear just in case people thinking, the angels tickling my feet every night, <laughs> you know, no, it's I'm being intentional about the way I live and the way I respond, the way I speak and the way I act. I can see that. And I have to comment, what are you wearing right here? What is this beautiful thing? What <laughs> oh, is that? What is my that? Earrings. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love those. Yes, I, anybody who know me know I love funky earrings. And when I seen them, I'm like, girl, give me those earrings. I love them. And so I love, love, love earrings. I oh, I, I think this is, this is amazing on you, but what a statement. And it, it, it amplifies your gratitude. There is no question about that. They have a vibration on their own and you look smashing. Amazing. I love that. I thank you so much for sharing what you're sharing with us. Lori, our audience is going to be so wowed uh, by this entire show. 
So our audience will know how to receive and how to reach you and how to comment to you. And they can comment right here. If you're watching our show now live or recording, you can comment to Lakeisha and then you can reach her on her website because we have all of that information there. And Lori, if our guests are watching going, I want to do that. They're saying to themselves, I want to be there. I want to be there with Lakeisha or next to her and they know how to reach her. They want to share a gratitude story. What does our guest do? What, what would be the next step for them? Would, what, you know, would it make sense for our guests to contact us if they have a story? Yes, absolutely. And I just thought of something too. I just wanted to share really quick. I know our time's up, but, um, but I wanted to share really quick something that Lakeisha said too. And I know all three of us are very strong-willed, kind of power control you know, type women. And I was at the chiropractor yesterday and she does that muscle testing. And so I was laying on the table on my stomach and she's doing something with my feet, testing my feet, right? And so she like pulls it up and then, um, but she's like, you let me pull it up to test things, right? And she'll constantly, my oldest son was in the room with me and she's like, your mom's not a little bit of a control freak, is she? And she taps my ankle, you know, and says, let me do it. <laughs> so, and I thought of that with, you know, with what Lakeisha said, you know, that even if you are in that type control freak attitude or, you know, you're that person that likes that control and you don't like to give up that control, but when you do allow yourself, when I had to consciously allow myself to give up that control and let her take it, but that's when, like what Lakeisha said, then that's when you can allow that peace to come through, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, that's what made me think of that when she was saying that too. So I just wanted Thank to you. add that in there real quick. Thank so, you. Yes. It's an important piece. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Yes. So everybody, yes, if you want to be featured on our show, send us a message at facebook.com slash gratitude girls. And Catherine and I will get your message, share your gratitude girl story with us. Um, what you're thankful, grateful for about. Um, Catherine and I will both read it. We will get back with you with our schedule and when we can get you featured on our show. We're so amazingly blessed to be booked. I think we're booked all this year. So we're already booking into next year. So um, if you would like to get on our show, please get with us. We would love to feature you and um, get you on our calendar. If you have missed any of the shows if you wanted to rewatch this one you can watch them at gratitudegirls.com we have all of our guests there you can read all about our different guests and re-watch any of the amazing shows and um and plus see any of the past shows for the last seven years they're all listed there Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much, Lori, for that. We spend our days listening to gratitude and gratitude stories, and that really fills us and it lifts us up. So we're doing that for you, but you're doing that for us. So we have a platform here for you, but it does so much. It gives us such a full heart. And to hear these stories especially now and at, at every time, we've been listening to stories for seven years about gratitude. You know, if we could, we would do a show every night because that's how many wonderful stories we hear. We do our show. It takes all month for us to really go through that. And this is a feature highlight for us. We couldn't imagine living the fourth Tuesday of every month without a gratitude show. It really means something to us. So, you know, think about that and how you can be part of that. And certainly we'd love, love to hear what you have to say. So Lakeisha, I want to thank you for being here and for bringing your grace and your peace and your beauty and your wisdom. The Gratitude Girls are blessed and honored, and we would love to continue to listen to you. I'm so thrilled that I got to meet you tonight. Lori, thank you so much for, for being so smart and so caring and knowing exactly what we all need at the right moment. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm honored. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. We will, we will see everyone here. So then we will be live. Let's see, Lori, let's see if I could do that. The fourth Tuesday of every month, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. 
7.30 Mountain and 6.30 Pacific Time, the last fourth Friday, fourth Tuesday, no, fourth Tuesday of every month. I almost did it right. Okay, just listen to Lori. She knows when we're here. And check our website in case I just confused you. <laughs> I love live shows. <laughs> Oh, Lori, we're good, right? <laughs> yes, we are good. Yes, everybody, thank you so much. So we will see you next month, fourth Tuesday night. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great night. Good night. Good night.